Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Odyssey Blue from Seed Studio. And basically what we have here is a package deal with the Odyssey x86 Windows single board computer. Now this comes pre-packaged with Windows 10 pre-installed, but it's unactivated. That's kind of where they get you. A 128GB SSD, no built-in eMMC like the original Odyssey, and the aluminum re-computer case. And this comes in at the price point of $239. Now, in the past, I've done a few videos on the Odyssey x86 single board computer. We've taken a look at it with Windows installed. We've taken a look at it with Linux installed. I've actually added an eGPU to it using one of the free M.2 slots. And overall, I am a big fan of this little mini computer. But since Seed is offering a new package deal, I figured we'd go ahead and take a look at this. So let's go ahead and get it out of the box. We're going to go over the specs, and then we'll get into a little bit of testing. Now, one of the main changes here with the Odyssey Blue is it does come pre-installed with a 128GB M.2 SSD, but it doesn't have any built-in eMMC storage like the original, and that's totally fine with me. I was using an SSD in the one I have anyway. But what we do get here is built-in AC Wi-Fi and this beautiful case. Now, we can pop the top right off of here so we can access the internals. There's a little push button on the bottom. And we can now access everything we need to get to, from the Grove connectors, the GPIO pins, the SSD, and the other M.2 slot. And you can always upgrade this with a 1TB M.2 or add an extra SSD inside of here. So along with the Odyssey Blue, we also get our power adapter, 12 volts, 1 amp, and we also get international plugs. So no matter where you are in the world, this should come with a plug that will work in your area. So as for I.O., on the front of the Odyssey Blue, we have a micro SD card slot, one USB 3.0 port, our audio jack or our auxiliary jack, plus we have a USB Type-C port. Now this will send power into the unit. It'll also do data and video out. So we basically have two video outputs on this unit. Round back, we have that full-size HDMI. Along with our power adapter, dual gigabit Ethernet, and two extra USB 2.0 ports. And the case itself is made to either sit horizontal or vertically like this. And personally, this is the way I have mine set up next to my monitor. As for the specs on the Odyssey Blue, for the CPU, we have the Intel Celeron J4105. This is a quad-core CPU, base clock 1.5, burst up to 2.5. The GPU is the built-in Intel UHD 600 graphics. We have 8 gigabytes of LPDDR4, dual-band AC Wi-Fi built-in, dual gigabit Ethernet, integrated Arduino, Raspberry Pi compatible 40 pin GPIO connector inside, two M.2 PCIe slots, one key B and one key M. This unit is fully compatible with the Grove ecosystem. We actually have three Grove connectors inside here and we can reach them by removing the top of the unit. No onboard eMMC, but it is equipped with that 128 gigabyte SSD. We have the recomputer case, which is this aluminum case that's on it. And that SSD comes pre-installed with Windows 10 Enterprise, but it is not activated. So you will have to provide your own key or flash a different operating system. And by the way, from within the BIOS, you can actually configure the CPU's TDP from 6 watts all the way up to 15. I leave mine at 15 because this is actively cooled with a nice heat sink and fan here. So I don't have to worry about it overheating. All right, so here we are. I do have this running at 1080p, but I do have the scaling set to 150% to make it a little easier on the eyes. As you can see, we have the Intel Celeron J4105, base clock 1.5 gigahertz, with a burst up to 2.4, and that burst is only on a single core. Eight gigs of LP DDR4 running at 2133. Now in the BIOS, you can set this to 2400 megahertz, but I couldn't get it to boot at 2400. I think it's kind of the luck of the draw because the first one I had, I was able to get it to boot at 2400 megahertz. 128 gigabyte SSD and the built-in Intel UHD 600 graphics. Now as for using the Odyssey Blue as an everyday PC for email checking, web browsing and things like that, it's gonna work out just fine. I'm using the latest Edge browser here. Everything loads up quickly. We'll go to the product page here. We'll get our scroll going. So, I mean, there's no lag at all, and there's a lot of stuff to load up on this page here. This little thing does truck through it pretty well with the internet browsing, especially using the new Edge browser. And WebGL actually performs really good with this little chip. We have 500 fish on screen, 60 FPS, go to 1000. 
starting to struggle a bit, but it does jump back up to 60. When we hit 5,000 is where it really starts to struggle, around 35 FPS. Really not that bad here for a small x86 single board computer. Pretty impressed with the performance here. And as for video playback from YouTube and Plex, it works amazingly. In my initial video that I did on the Odyssey x86, I tested out a bunch of 4K videos with Plex, and I had no issues whatsoever running some really high bitrate stuff. And right now, we're at YouTube, 4K, Big Buck Bunny, 60 FPS, do have stats for nerds on, and you will see the frames dropping at first, but if we never had this on, you wouldn't ever notice it. It actually does perform really well for a low powered single board computer. So if you want to use something like this for web browsing or media consumption, it's going to work out just fine. Head over to YouTube, watch some 720p, 1080, 4K content, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, you're going to have a good time with it. I also went through and ran a few power consumption tests. Now remember in the BIOS I have this set at 15 watts, idle 4.4 watts, watching 4K video on YouTube 8.2 watts, and the maximum I could get out of it with maxing out all four cores on the CPU and the GPU at the same exact time, 16.7 watts total power draw from the wall. And with everyday use, you'll probably never see that 16.7 watts. This was an extreme case scenario. So far, this has actually handled everything that I've thrown at it quite well, and if you're the kind of person that just uses their computer normally, checking email, Word document editing, maybe some light image editing, YouTube video playback, Netflix, HBO, and things like that, you'll be perfectly content with a small PC like this. But now it's time to test out a couple PC games. Before we get into it, I do want to mention that this is not marketed as a gaming PC whatsoever, but it doesn't mean we can't try to have some fun with it. So the first game I wanted to test was Fall Guys. 720p, the lowest settings, I'm at half resolution in the settings on the game, and we just can't hit that 30 FPS mark. I would have loved to see this run at 60, but with a small low powered computer like this, I was really hoping for 30, and we just can't hit that mark. Now easier to run Source Engine games like Half-Life and Half-Life 2 actually work pretty well on here. You can get away with low, medium settings, 720p, 60 FPS all day. But I actually wanted to get right down to it and see if it can run Crisis. So here we have the original Crisis, low settings, 720p, and we're getting over 30 FPS. I was actually kind of happy with the performance here. Now this isn't something I would like to run every day, 720p, 30 FPS, but to see this little board running Crisis is still pretty cool. And of course, since I'm here, I figured I'd go ahead and test Minecraft. This is the Windows Store version. I'm set to 32 chunks. I do have fancy graphics on, and we're at a constant 60. I'm gonna hit up some dynamite real quick and just see what happens. In the past, I've had really good luck with these lower end chips in this version of Minecraft, so I don't think we're gonna dip in the frames. Went down to 59, not a big deal. So yeah, Minecraft is fully playable on the Odyssey Blue. So in the end, even though they're calling this the Odyssey Blue, it's just a repackaged Odyssey x86, which I reviewed a few months ago. I've actually done a few videos on it. I got a video with it running an eGPU. I've tested out some Linux distributions, some emulations. So if you're interested in checking out those videos to get an idea of the kind of performance the Odyssey Blue is going to put out, I'll leave links for those in the description. But overall, I'm still a big fan of this little board, and I'm actually glad that they came out with a package like this. Now keep in mind, Windows isn't activated, but you can pick up a cheap key and get this thing activated super easily. We have that 128 GB SSD that can be easily upgraded, or you can add a second. And it comes with that re-computer case, which I think looks really awesome, especially when you have it in a vertical position, sitting next to your monitor on your desk. So yeah, it's definitely a neat little package, and keep in mind, this is an x86 CPU, so there's tons of different operating systems that we can run. From Linux, Android, we can run standalone emulation operating systems on here like Batocero, Laka, and even RetroPie if you want to install it inside Ubuntu, so we have lots of choices with this thing. But that's pretty much it for this video. Really appreciate you watching, I just wanted to give you this quick look at the all new Odyssey Blue. If you're interested in learning more, I will leave a few links in the description. And if there's anything you want to see running on this, let me know in the comments below. But like always, 
Thanks for watching.